So a fairly recent study, not brand new, but it's from earlier this year, recently came to my attention, and it covers a group of patients with type 2 diabetes who did low carb for almost three years on average for those different patients that did it, and it shows what kind of results they got. And it, it's able to kind of break down which types of patients were able to put their diabetes in remission more often and which ones did it less often and what other results they got related to their cholesterol levels and their blood pressure and their body weight and things like that. So there's a lot of interesting results. So I'm going to talk about the background of that study, what they did, what results they got, and then kind of what conclusions we can draw from it. By the way, I'm Ben. I'm a PA and I often talk about nutrition and fasting and how you can improve your health. Um, also, the ketogenic diet is something I talk about. So today we're going to be talking about low carb and the results from this study. So for a little basic background, um, if you don't already know, type 2 diabetes for most of the last 50 or 75 years was, uh, was generally talked about as a progressive irreversible condition. And so the idea was if you got it, it was just going to gradually get worse. And eventually you would probably get you know, all the complications. What are those complications? Well, the high blood sugar is just like this acid in your body and kind of just destroys everything eventually. <laughs> so you get the neuropathy where your nerves stop kind of stop working in your legs and stuff. You get the blindness because it messes up your eyes. You get the kidney failure because it messes up your kidneys. And eventually you get a heart attack or a stroke and you die. Sometimes you get your legs cut off, amputations, and so all that stuff. And so that's the kind of stuff that if there's a way to put diabetes in remission, then those things could be avoided. Wow, what a big difference, right? So that's kind of, that's that's why people have been trying things like low carb or bringing them back into favor. Because of course, when diabetes first came on the scene, you know, a long time ago, some people recognized the only way to treat it was low carb, because otherwise your blood sugar was always going to be high. But when they started injecting insulin and using other medications in the mid 1900s, then that, that philosophy kind of changed. And it's like, oh, we can just use medications to treat it instead of um, avoiding the sugar and the carbs. Um, so, but you know, now most people don't remember that history. And so they're just like, oh, it's just this thing where you have to take medications and then eventually inject insulin and stuff, but there's a better way. So that's what this study is kind of looking at. So what happens if you do low carb for diabetes? All right, so here's the study. So it talks about the background and then the methods. So basically what they did is they advised their patients um, that they could use low carb as a treatment option for diabetes, type 2 diabetes is what we're talking about, which is the more more common type of diabetes. Um, type 1 is the one where your pancreas just completely stops working and you have no insulin, but type 2 is much more likely. It's the one that you know 90% of the people have, basically. All right, so Dr. David Unwin in his practice in England, um, they counseled the patients, this is an option um, if you want to use it. And if they did want to use it, they gave them like dietary counseling and various resources and things about what to do to kind of replace the carbs with the lower carb foods like the meat and dairy and you know low glycemic vegetables and eggs and all the different things. Um, so what were the results? Let's take a look at this paragraph that kind of shows the results and I'll talk about a few of them and then I'll look at some of the graphs and things and we'll talk about the results that way as well. All right, so the results, this paragraph has a lot of information. So, um, so I'll kind of break it down bit by bit. So first it shows that there were 186 patients, so almost 200 patients, and that was 39% of the total type 2 diabetes patients in their practice um, over that time frame, I guess. And the time frame was 2013 to 2021 is when they were tracking this data. But you know, different patients were tracked at different times because, of course, they might have had a new patient that started in 2015 or, or whatever. So the average amount of time for the patients was 33 months. Um, and then what happened with those patients? Well, several things. Basically, as it's going to show here, their hemoglobin A1C got better, but it says it, these are these are different metrics than the ones we use in the United States, so I'll do a conversions in some cases, but the A1C got better. They're showing 63 to 46, um, and then 77% of the people with type 2 diabetes who had had it for less than a year put it in remission, um, and then of those people that had had diabetes for over 15 years, 20% of them were able to put it in remission. So overall, that was 51% of people uh, of those patients put type 2 diabetes in remission. So first, let's just talk about that for a moment. That's pretty remarkable. So if you've only had type 2 diabetes for a short time, or better yet, if you have prediabetes, <laughs> then that then most likely you can put it in remission just by dietary changes. Um, now, if you've had diabetes for quite a few years, it may not get into remission in a short amount of time, or maybe never. Um, but they go on to talk about later that they um, they had a significant improvement in the blood sugar control even in those people that didn't 
put it in remission. Um, so going back to the results, a few other things they noted is that the LDL cholesterol got better. So again, they're using these numbers from England. Um, they say it got better by 0.5 millimoles per liter. So I think in, in our United States terms, that's 19 milligrams per deciliter. And then the triglycerides decreased by 0.9 millimoles per liter, which I believe is 35 uh, milligrams per deciliter in the numbers we would use here in the US. Um, and then the blood pressure improved by 12 milligrams of mercury systolic. That's the top number in your blood pressure. Um, so pretty cool results there as well in terms of cholesterol got better, different types of cholesterol and stuff, and also the blood pressure. Um, so what they go on to talk about is all the savings in medications. Um, so think about this. The blood sugar obviously got better because the A1C was coming down. The blood pressure got better and the cholesterol was getting better. And so they obviously didn't need as many medications for those various things. And so let's look at the savings here. Um, so there, this is pounds because it's England. But basically each patient um, on average was having to spend about five pounds per year on drugs for diabetes compared with 11 pounds for other practices, um, local practices. So it was less than half as much as typical patients. So they were saving about more than half of the money they would have been spending on diabetic medications. And then they give some other numbers about the, the, the overall savings in their practice. So in case you prefer to see a graph, here's a graph, this is figure one in the study. This shows a lot of the details about how much better things got. Um, so kind of walking through this from the top left and then going across on the first row and then the second row. So you'll notice that um, there's a significant weight loss. So that's that first, the top left. Um, you know, the before is the dark gray and the after is the light gray. Um, and then the H hemoglobin A1C is the middle of the top row. And so there's a significant decrease there. The triglycerides is that third one. Um, and that goes down the next row, the blood pressure goes down some, and then the total cholesterol goes down and the, then they're showing the total cholesterol, the HDL ratio. Um, and then that also went down. So all of those things got better by varying degrees by using the low carb diet for the patients that were in this study. Let me show you one more figure that I think kind of ties it all together or shows kind of some of the overall results in a way that's maybe a little easier to digest. Um, and that's this one right here. Um, so this is, a, this is a figure that Dr. Unwin shared on his Twitter account um, and perhaps elsewhere. So he shows here the pie graph that shows basically almost everyone had improvement in their blood sugar control. So 97%. So that's everyone except that narrow red um, pie, piece of pie <laughs> sliver on the top of the pie chart. Um, but these patients are not eating pie, by the way, just to throw that in. But uh, on, the, on the right side, it's showing patients that um, had better control, but not enough to qualify for remission. So that's the green on the right side. And then the left side shows the blue, which is just over half, 51%. And those are the patients that did put their type 2 diabetes in remission. And again, this was during a time frame of 33 months. Um, so that's kind of kind of what we're looking at. So, and then of course, not just diabetes, but they also improved other things, as it says in the bottom left there. They also improved cardiometabolic risk factors, blood pressure, lipids, and saved money on medications. So what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, basically that for a, for a large percentage of patients with type 2 diabetes, and I'll lump in the people with prediabetes because there's tons and tons of them too. But for a large percentage of them, low carb can be a really effective option. Uh, they were able to sustain it for a long amount of time, for years. Uh, more than half of them put their diabetes in remission. They were saving a lot of money on medications and they were improving other health measures like things related to their cholesterol, triglycerides, blood pressure, losing weight, all those things. And of course, these people were at a much, 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 much lower risk of having a heart attack or a stroke as a result of their diabetes. Also a much lower risk of having blindness, kidney failure, you know, amputations and all those other diabetes complications. So is low carb for everyone on with type 2 diabetes? No, not everyone. But uh, th these were just the patients that chose to use it. But who would it be a good fit for? Um, I'd say like 90 plus percent of people with type 2 diabetes would benefit from doing it. Um, and it would be a good idea for them to do it. Um, there are a few people that they excluded, like I said, like people with anorexia, for example, or uh, I believe are considered a contraindication to doing a, a low carb or keto diet. Um, and there's there's some other, you know, mental illness and stuff that sometimes uh, makes it more difficult, but that doesn't mean it's impossible in some of those cases. So, but for most, most people, it's gonna help control the blood sugar a lot better. And for a pretty good percentage, more than half, it may be able to put it in remission. Um, another final interesting takeaway is they pointed out that, um, as I mentioned earlier, if you've had diabetes for less than a year, then 
it's a lot easier to put it in remission, basically, because 77% of those people put it in remission versus only 20% of the people that had had diabetes for many years, over 15 years. But think about that for a second, how encouraging that is that even if you've had diabetes for 20 years, about 20% of those people put their diabetes in remission, and the other ones got a lot better blood sugar control even though they didn't put it in remission. So you might even be able to put your diabetes in remission even if you had it for many years. And if we carry this timeline forward or if they made a few other health-related changes during the same time frame, maybe even a higher percentage of those people could put it in remission um, with a little more time or with some other changes to their lifestyle like certain types of exercise, um, certain other tweaks and adjustments to their diet, doing some fasting at some point, things like that that the people in the study may or may not have been doing because the main focus was doing low carb. So pretty cool study, pretty encouraging results to say the least. I'll put a link below where you can read the whole paper. And if you want to learn more about low carb and the benefits of low carb, here's an interview I did with Dr. Ken Ford, the host of STEM Talk, where we talk a lot about the science behind keto and whom, whom it can benefit and how. And then if you're interested in learning more about intermittent fasting and how that can be beneficial for people with diabetes, here's a playlist that goes over health benefits related to intermittent fasting. And there's a bunch of other stuff related to that on my channel too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.